Hi, I'm Kelly with Clark Sport. Today we're going to install the high pressure fuel pump internals into our 2013 Mazda Speed 3. We're going to have an open fuel source, no open flames or sparks or anything like that. A nice big open space because we're going to have gas fumes. Um, make sure everything's nice and well ventilated and we also are going to spill a little bit of fuel probably so make sure that whatever your car is parked on top of can have fuel spilt on top of it. One of the other first things we always do especially when opening fuel systems is first thing we're going to do is disconnect the battery. Another thing we do is cover the front of the car where we're going to be working on so we don't get any oil or fuel spilled onto our nice paint. First, we're going to get all of our tools together and get going. So for installing the fuel pump, the first thing we're going to need to do is gather up all of our tools that we're going to use. We're going to start with a quarter inch socket wrench, small extension, a 10 millimeter socket, and E8 uh, reverse torques, or this is a, a 40 Torx reverse socket. Um, if you're not familiar with these, uh, a flathead screwdriver and a 19 millimeter and 17 millimeter open end wrench, and that's it. So first, we'll start by removing the stock intercooler shroud if it's still there with your 10 millimeter socket wrench. Now here we have the high pressure fuel pump. Uh, you can tell by it has two hard plastic lines with two colored clips that go into the top of it and also an electrical connector in the very top of it as well. But before we start going after that, first thing we want to do is let's disconnect the battery of the vehicle. And again, you do that with your 10 millimeter quarter inch socket. And I always like to remove the negative side of the battery. And then I'll push the connector down. And I'll put the cover back over it. So next we're going to go um, remove the electrical connector off of the pump. Do that by squeezing the tab on the clip and push it aside. I'm also going to take this PCV line and move it out of the way, the brake booster line, and it'll be attached to this clip. Um, undo that and kind of get it out of the way too. You're uh, going to want as much room in this area as possible to work. So here I have another high pressure fuel pump housing that um, is one of our test housings. Here we have the high pressure output side of the pump. This has a 17 millimeter nut, and then the line that's on the fuel rail is a 19. So when removing this 19, I like to hold this 17 in place, and I'll show you that in a minute. Three screws that fasten this to the head, and these are the two lower pressure fuel lines that have the plastic clips and the electrical connector, of course. So I'm gonna start by cracking the high pressure line on the back of the uh, fuel pump. I'm going to hold that upper nut with the 17 in place and you should be able to just kind of squeeze this in between the brake master and the ECU. Um, if not, you'll have to kind of move it around until you find a good happy spot for that. Um, and then the 19 millimeter, barely crack this line. Now depending on when the last time you were running the car, the, there could be uh, a thousand pounds of pressure behind here. Um, I haven't run the car in a while, so there's really not a whole lot of fuel leaking out. But usually there will be a, quite a bit of fuel leaking out at this point. You may want to have a rag or make sure you're doing this in a place where it's okay if you get some fuel spilt on the floor. So now that you've got the hard line underneath the pump, um, just loose, you don't have to take it all the way off at this point. Just let the pressure uh, be relieved. We're going to disconnect the hard plastic lines and 
To do that, I use a flathead screwdriver on the yellow clip, pry it outward, but not all the way. It'll stay on its black connector and gently rock that back and forth and pull it up. Um, that's what that guy looks like. And the second one is a blue clip and you can spread this clip apart just with your bare fingers and push down and then pull up on it. Um, here you can see the, the blue clip and how it spreads apart. And then I go ahead and reach back and disconnect the high pressure fuel line, the 19, all the way. Okay, now that all of our fuel lines are loose, we're going to remove the three E8 Torx fasteners. The second one is tucked down pretty far back uh, behind everything. It's uh, you got to kind of find it by feel. So I leave the easiest one, for me at least, last. And as you remove the third Torx, the whole pump assembly will start to come out of the head this way. Now I'm pulling this out of the head, and as you do so, there is actually a, a bucket that rides against the camshaft uh, right here, that rides inside of this housing. Uh, make sure when you pull this pump out, if that comes out with it, don't lose it, and it goes with the flat side in. And then we'll take this and uh, we'll go to the bench and start to disassemble it. So now that we have a fuel pump housing removed from the vehicle, first thing we're going to do is make sure that we've got a nice clean workspace. We've got clean lint-free towels. We have some of the fuel that we kept from earlier. I have nice, clean, fresh hands. I'm going to use clean, fresh motor oil to lubricate all the parts and a bench vise. I'm going to take a towel and place it inside the vise and set the fuel pump down inside and tighten it. We need a deep 18 millimeter socket and a long handle 3 8 inch wrench. There will be fuel inside of this when you pull it apart. There we go. And when you remove the internals, you'll notice that there is the factory sleeve sits down inside of the pump. You can either bring that out with the internals or if they don't, then reach in there maybe with um, some small pliers or something and grab the sleeve out of the pump. Here we have the steel screw and the factory internal piston and spring. To remove that, twist the spring off of the seal screw and remove the piston. While we've got the seal screw disassembled from the pump housing, I'm going to take my clean towel and use some of the fuel that we saved from earlier. I'm going to use that to clean out the inside of the seal screw. We're also going to inspect for any damage to the threads or the o-ring. Inside of the box we'll find an installation tool. We have an installation pipe. Inside of that will be the spring and retainer and tap it and the piston and sleeve assembly. First we begin by unwrapping the piston and sleeve and separate the two. <coughs> I'm going to apply clean motor oil. To insert it inside of the seal screw. This should go relatively smoothly. Next we unpackage the spring and we're going to insert that down onto the screw, onto the seal screw. And then unwrap the spring retainer and tap it. I'm 
I'm going to place the screen retainer into the Corkscore installation tool with the groove in the retainer facing the groove in the installation tool. And then I'm going to slide the piston into the groove in the retainer and place that into the pipe. I'm going to apply a little bit more oil to the inside of the retainer and I'm going to place the tappet into the retainer dome side up. I push that into place and then use the handle of a plastic screwdriver to tap that in. Now to install the assembled seal screw and piston, I'm going to apply a light amount of oil onto the O-ring and a light amount onto the piston itself. Then I'm going to take the sleeve and going to install this little end down into the pump housing, large end onto the seal screw. It's easiest if you slide it onto the piston first and then place that down into the pump housing and thread this in by hand as far as you can get it to go. And I'm going to use a torque wrench set to 40 foot pounds. And remove the pump from the vise, and we're ready to go back to the car and install the pump housing. All right, now that you've got your fuel pump all assembled uh, and everything's all nice and clean, first thing I like to do is make sure that this whole surface here and O-ring are lubricated for when you install it back into the car. And I have a little bottle of motor oil that I use to lubricate my air tools with, and. I just put a little dab on there and as well I put it on the bearing surface here at the very end of the pump and now we're ready to go. Alright, so to put the pump back into the car, first thing we need to do is locate our 19 millimeter nut that has probably fallen back uh, pretty far down there um, back onto the back side of the motor by now. If not, you got kind of lucky. Um, what I like to do is I like to take a magnet from my toolbox and hold that nut in place to keep it from falling back down and make it readily accessible when you put the housing in to grab and thread back on. Um, another thing to do if you don't have a magnet handy is to pull the nut all the way up and tie a zip tie around the fuel line. Uh, and cut the end of it off and that will keep the nut from falling back down the fuel line and you can just leave the zip tie on there. So, now that we're all ready for it, I'm going to take the fuel pump housing and insert it back to its home. Now you're going to be pushing against the spring pressure when you're putting the pump back into place. It's not going to want to go and sit directly on the, onto uh, the head, right back onto the head. Um, but you want to make sure that it's also not bound up at all and it's going straight into the head this direction. Um, so work it kind of back and forth and again this is what the lubrication is for. And you should be able to, by hand, push it all the way flat against the head. And then I hold it in place. And this part can be a little difficult. And I start hand threading one of the torque screws in. And I do it in stages. And kind of push the pump and then twist it in and push the pump and twist it in. Yeah, I've got one in most of the way. Then I'll do a second. And 
And again, push the pump, get it to seat. And then the third. I want to make sure and put these all in as far as I can by, by hand. They should just thread right back in place. If not, then maybe there's some contaminants that got down into the threads when you remove the pump <coughs> or uh, it's not going in as straight as it should. This is not a place where you want to start cross threading things. If it doesn't go together by hand, pull it back out inspect everything make sure everything's um, nothing's damaged and try again um, and then I'll do the 19 millimeter flare nut on the high pressure line I'll start it by hand too and this guy sometimes you gotta kind of fight with to get it to line up correctly just take your time and be real careful and you'll get it. All right. Now that everything's hand tight, we'll go through with some tools and tighten it up for good. This is why I use a quarter inch wrench for these because we really don't need to put too much torque on these bolts. Now that the three torque screws are tightened down, I'm going to come back with the 19 millimeter and tighten that high pressure fuel line. Again, this because you're doing it all by feel mostly. Uh, just take your time and you'll find it. Make sure that the open-ended wrench is on that nut really well. You don't want to strip that guy either. All right, just make sure that one's good and tight. Next, we'll reconnect the, the softer fuel lines. The blue line goes on the back and it just snaps down in place. Pull back up on it to make sure that it has locked in place. And the yellow end goes on the front connection and push it down and then push the yellow clip back into its place. And then again, pull up on the fuel line to make sure that it has properly clipped down in place. And lastly, we have the electrical connector. All right, now to button it all back up, we'll reconnect the PCV line, put on the intercooler shroud, and reconnect the battery before starting it. Okay. If you have the smart key, get in your car and we want to uh, we want to cycle the ECU and the fuel pump to pressurize the system, make sure there's nothing leaking. So, get in the car, don't push on the clutch pedal and hold the start button on until everything powers up and pay close attention for any sort of leaking fuel um, that could be very disastrous
Lastly, after you double check that no fuel is leaking, we're going to start the car and make sure it fires up and again make sure that there's no um, fuel leaking.